Okay, perfect. We are live. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Village Guy. Of course, those of you joining for the first time. Um, yeah, we chat about people from Paul and Wellington just doing amazing things. People following their dreams, um, movers and shakers of Paul. And one of them, of course, is Enrico Olafir. Um, Enrico, born and bred in Paul, currently finding himself... Um, in the U in the UK, um, and he's got a very interesting job and an interesting background. And I wanted to find out more about Enrico. I don't want to introduce him much because I, I, I think I must say something like an astrophysicist, but I'm not going to go into those words. Uh, he can give us a better <laughs> indication of what um, Enrico is all about. But Enrico, thank you so much for your time. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Um... Thanks for giving me the opportunity to chat to you. It's good to see other people from PAL for a change. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So I am an astrophysicist by training. So when I left Clay Niederberg Senior Secondary, I went to UWC. Um, I knew I wanted to be a scientist. I wasn't sure what kind of scientist yet at that stage. Um, and so I just took the subjects which I enjoyed, which was like, um, I took a bit of biology, chemistry, maths and physics. And then eventually when I got to my final year, I, I did maths and, maths and physics as a degree. And then it was a, quite of a decision at that point which way I was going to go. And so I decided to, to do physics. So I ended up doing a, an honours in physics and then... Um, there was an opportunity for physics um, postgraduates to do a master's in astronomy at the South African Astronomical Observatory. So I thought, oh, wow, I'll give that a try, <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> so, and then, um, so after two years of doing that, I got my MSc. I was still registered at UWC at that stage. And I thought, okay, I enjoyed this experience. Um, I want to see what else is there to do. Um, so I got the opportunity talking to my supervisor at that stage, um, an opportunity to go to Australia to do research in a particular area that I was very interested in. So I went off there for four years. I did my doctorate degree over there. And then I came back to South Africa. I do. I spent several years at the observatory and then a couple of years at UWC uh, doing research, um, teaching. Uh, I've, at one stage, I was employed as a lecturer at UWC as well. And then as life rolled on, I met somebody, somebody, somebody and uh, we had some, some kids. And eventually, uh, we decided to come to the UK for family reasons, essentially. And I've been here now for about, what is it, 2016 to now is about just over four years. Um, I've left astronomy behind. I'm still working for an organization that's involved with science, but this is more like weather science and climate science. And I'm actually doing, uh, I'm now a software engineer. So actually the skills that I got doing physics and astronomy, um, I did a lot of um, high performance computing stuff, numerical simulations of stars. Um, and that kind of got me the job over here where I now like work with uh, computer codes and model the, the weather. That's basically it. Okay, so, so I mean, uh, so astrophysicists tell me what does the astro, I mean, what does the astrophysicist do? Just explain, uh, I mean, what All do right. you do? Okay. So most people are probably familiar with the term astronomy. So, I mean, astronomy has been part of cultures all over the world for thousands of years. Um, you know, every, I mean, you get stories about uh, the night sky in Africa, South America, Europe, China. And so astronomy had developed over the centuries and, and into a study basically about stars, their positions in the sky and how they change. And around about probably in the mid 1800s um, and later, people started applying um, physics to astronomy and trying to actually understand understand the objects up up in the night sky like stars planets what are they made of uh why do they behave the way they do 
Um, and that actually turned astronomy, what I would call astrophysics, which is actually the application of physics that we know on the Earth in describing the objects in the night sky. Yeah, and I mean, so I, why, why are you... So why am I interested in astronomy? Enrico, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, sorry. Oh, okay, so sorry. Why, why um, am I interested in astronomy and astrophysics? Yeah, why did you move away? I mean, that's so, that's such an interesting, such an interesting subject to move to computer software. I mean, was it, uh, was it a, a career choice? Yeah, it was basically a career choice. It was just a fam, uh, just like um, a family choice. Uh, my partner's from the UK, so she wanted to come back here. Also, uh, my son is on the autistic spectrum, so we just felt that you know he'd have a better uh, chance and opportunity so in the UK than back mm -hmm. home. So, okay. um, and also, I I tend to try new things all the time. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I thought like, so when I got here, yeah, I got interested in um, how people model the weather and, you know, people talking about climate change and things like that. So I applied a few times to, to the Met Office over here um, and eventually I got a position here as well. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, no, uh, so let's, let's talk a bit about lockdown. I was locked down in the UK. Um, where are you? At what stage are you? Is it free for all? What's happening there? <laughs> That's a very good question. So the UK ended lockdown, I think, around about the end of March, um, start of April, which was a little bit late. Um, compared to South Africa, I think, which kind of started once they, I think in South Africa, once you had the first few cases, you immediately went into lockdown, if I remember correctly. Um, over here, they waited a little bit longer. Anyway, we're now slowly transitioning out of lockdown. Um, so schools has been closed um, and it will open again in September. So schools run here from September to September. That's the school here. So they actually now have summer holidays from start of July or soon in the next one or two weeks until um, basically the start of September. And yeah, I mean, Initially, people were quite free to do what they they want. You were supposed to stay at home at most time. You weren't supposed to meet anybody. Um, and you were always supposed to keep two meter distancing rule. Um, but other than that, it, was, it wasn't really that bad. You used to, I mean, you watch the people go past your front door and so forth. They were, they did allow people to go out for about an hour's exercise every day. So we used to take the kids out in the afternoon, go for a walk. Um, so my partner's a teacher. So she would be teaching the whole morning uh, online. And then I'd be teach homeschooling the kids till about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then I'd start my work at three o'clock in the afternoon. And I'll probably go through till the middle of the night, which is around about nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay. So that was quite hard doing that for, you know, three months in a row. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. I, I'm looking forward to the kids are now going to go on proper holiday in the next week or so. So that would be pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So, and then otherwise, I, I mean, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I, I guess I, I feel sorry for people who was living on their own because they, mm. they couldn't see anybody. It must have been really hard for them. Um, but now with the lockdown is now slowly been easing. So people are now being able to, you know, meet people in your front garden. You apparently are able to go outside to a park and meet six people, a maximum of six people. And also just a week or so ago, you were allowed to, um, go meet other family members. So if you, if you were a single grandmother and so forth, and you were mm. isolated by yourself, mm. you're now allowed to join another household, essentially. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's probably cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, tell me, was the uh, panic buying or the police walking up and down? <laughs> yeah, it was, quite a, it was quite a bit of panic buying. I remember, like, I, you probably got the same thing back home because I saw, I saw some videos in Australia, the same thing happened. 
Um, I don't know why, but like there was quite a, there was a shortage of toilet rolls in the shops for, <laughs> for quite a few weeks. Initially, I don't know what is it about toilet rolls, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was an annoyance. Um, fortunately, where we live, there's just a corner shop around the corner, so um, for the first week or so, they they were running out of toilet rolls, but eventually it was fine. It was just the big supermarkets; it was just the shelves were just empty. Yeah, but after yeah. a month or so, everything kind of calmed down. Um, it's okay. The only annoying thing is I've been trying to get myself a bike for the last three months, and all the bikes are sold out online, mm -hmm. so you can't get a bike. I even tried to get a um, exercise bike. Yeah, all of those are sold out as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it was with, uh, on our side as well. It was it's quite interesting. I went to game just after we were allowed to go to game and people were buying treadmills and uh, cycling bikes. It's the first yeah, thing yeah. I went to. to yeah, keep yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keep it active, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Enrico, tell me, so what's your view on, um, of course, we had this space exploration, South African Elon Musk uh, doing yeah, things yeah. that no one ever thought so. What are your what are what are your views on space exploration? I mean, if you do astrophysicist, you're reading stars. You must be somewhere inclined to know what's happening. Mars? Yeah. Are we going to occupy Mars very anytime soon? What's your view on it? Give me some of your view. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm. So that's more like space flight, uh, which is kind of separate from from astronomy and astrophysics. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, you, you tend to do keep an eye on these things, and I think it's great that you now have private companies actually um, transporting satellites into orbit, um, and actually seeing NASA being able to uh, actually using these private companies to do this. Uh, I think the more more this is privatized, and the more people or um, the more competition there is, um, the better. And this is, it's good for the future of space flight. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it also kind of releases NASA a little bit to focus on more long-term goals. And I think that's the aim why they've recently used SpaceX to transport mm -hmm. some astronauts mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. um, to, the, mm -hmm. to the space station. Um, and it just frees them to focus more of their efforts, whether that's money or resources on like, you know, putting the first person or going back to the moon or looking at uh, uh, missions to Mars, etc., which would be great. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm all for that. For that. Um, yeah. I have a slight annoyance with Elon Musk, though, and these Starlink satellites, <laughs> which is putting <laughs> up thousands up into the night sky, because it's slightly annoying for astronomers um, because when you do observations, particularly long, long-term long exposure observations, you pick up these satellites in your data images and then you have mm. to remove them. Um, mm. It's a slight annoyance, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's, but other, the any, all the other stuff he does is obviously awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Just for the for the layman, what is it? What is Elon Musk's satellites doing up there? I mean, I didn't even know this satellite. Well, I'm just just for the layperson, what is what does it mean? Um, so he has this program, and I think this I can't remember the exact number that's up there at the moment, but I think it's on the order of 10, 10, 000, 40, 000 or something like that. He wants to eventually put up there. And these are low orbits, very small satellites, from what I understand, and they form this network. And from what I gathered, is it's going to be used for telecommunications, essentially, and providing, um, yeah, tele telecommunications uh, access over Africa in particular. Was he was talking about, or his company was talking about, anyway? So um, yeah, so things like GPS. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and you know, okay. yeah, three G. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's go. Let's go back a bit. So primary school, high school. Where were you? So in primary school, I was in William William Lloyd Primary. Yeah, one of the teachers here on Facebook are saying, "Hello, Enricom. Good to see you. Proud ex student of William Lloyd Primary." <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I remember. remember. Yeah. Uh, high school was Clay Niederberg senior secondary. I, okay. when I went to high school in standard six, it was still where Charleston Hill senior secondary is now. Mm. 
Yeah. Oh. So that building, yeah, Klein Niederberg, we used was there, and then I, I, I think it was it was standard eight. I think for people that don't know, that's grade ten, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> grade ten, uh, we moved to the building that's currently, uh, yeah, in Pal at the moment. Yeah. 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 Near the near the stadium, the cricket stadium. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, highlights. Give me the highlights of the school Luban. Can you uh, stop with Afrikaans? What oh. highlights are they? Yeah, I can know Afrikaans, but <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, I. I to be honest, when I was in primary school, I didn't particularly like school when I was when I was young. I only started liking school when I was probably in my last year or so at primary school. Um, yeah, I just wanted to play all the time at home, things like that. I think yeah. I think that's probably true of a lot of kids anyway. Um, so yeah, um, I remember Mr. Samai. He was uh, he was my principal at some point. Mm. Uh, yeah, and he used to play the organ in my church, Bethel. Um, what is it? Bethel Congregational Church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Pedro was. Yeah, um, I remember him. I remember him. Yeah, because yeah. I remember I was in the boys' choir as well at some stage, and he was oh, wow. like, yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he was the teacher that was like training us basically in the boys' choir. Okay. Um, and then high school, I must say, I enjoyed high school um, all the way through. Um, yeah, I think it's basically because I had the opportunity to choose the subject that I wanted to choose. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess the highlight, I guess, for me was my final here in the trick. I really enjoyed that, and I just enjoyed my friends that I had uh, there. I think it's just the friends that I made at school mm. and the time that I spent with them. That was that was the fun yeah. part. Yeah, that yeah. was really great. Um, and then. I did very well in my final year at school. Um, that's how I got a bursary to get to get into UWC. Otherwise, I wouldn't, wouldn't have actually been able to get into UWC at that stage. So that was really cool. Yeah. So, so, so tell me, was uh, were the parents strict and said, "Enrico, you must get an A," or was Enrico just <laughs> with natural was natural, um, a natural talent? Read a book once and got hundred <laughs> percent. Um. I mean, yeah, I guess I was one of the, uh, in terms of academic wise, in in maths and physics anyway, or not even Skakenda, as they used to call it mm. back then. Um, yeah, I, I guess I had a I had a knack for those. Um, I guess the subjects I didn't like that much was my languages, but I couldn't leave, leave them obviously, obviously because yeah, you had to do them. Um, I had some interesting teachers though. I remember at high school. Um, Anyway, and then, yeah, um, my parents in terms of motivation, I guess my parents always, I, both my brothers and me, they tried to push us academically. Um, uh, but I don't think they put undue pressure on us. Um, they obviously just like, yeah, they were strict. I mean, but um, I don't think they were like, you know, very, very strict in the sense of, pushing very hard. Um, they just kind of accepted what we are capable of and, and you know, um, yeah. And let us get on with it essentially. Yeah, and the uh, sport? No, no no sport? Nah, I was terrible. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I, I tried long distance running um, for a while when I was in high school, but I wasn't really that good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so currently, so currently, you say you're working for a computer company and you develop software, and you it's got to do with weather as well. Just give me a brief. Okay. Um, so, the company I work for is uh, well, it's part government, part private in a sense. Well, it's a private part arm of 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 a government uh, organization which basically provide weather products for for their customers which could either be you know the shops want to know like you know is it going to flood um okay. is it going to snow let the, the local councils know if the right the 
the roads are going to ice over so that they can prepare in advance to basically sort the road so that they don't freeze essentially so they got lots of customers but what they actually do is they also um, do research at the met office um, and they basically um, do research into climate change and things like that but they also run models numerical simulations of the local weather over the UK every single day. Okay. And then they produce okay. the weather forecast from that. So okay. essentially my role is as a software engineer um, is basically just curating the main software that actually is being used to run on the supercomputer um, to produce these forecasts. Okay. And uh, we basically um, improve the code, um, check the changes that the scientists make to the code and, um, and make sure that the code doesn't, that the scientist doesn't make changes to the code that will break it in the long run, uh, mm. etc. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then tell me, so do you have your telescope at home in the lounge looking at the stars during the night? <laughs> yes, we have it. Yeah, we have a telescope. Um, the UK is quite cloudy most of the time, <laughs> so we don't really get a chance to view that much. Um, and we have joined, uh, my, my partner is also a astronomer um, by training, uh, but she went into teaching. Um, and uh, yeah, we have joined the astronomy club, so yeah, we do some, now and then we do some night sky viewing. Um, I must okay, say, cool. um, I find the southern sky it's it's um, it's much more to see in the southern sky than in the northern sky because in the southern sky you can actually see the center of a Milky Way which you can't actually see from the northern hemisphere. Oh, nice! Which is really cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I I'm not too for I I know a couple of stars now here in the northern northern hemisphere, but yeah, I yeah yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, to to know. So you both are lovers for stars. You both astronomers. I, I'm, I mean, to know what was the pickup line for? I mean, like, our stars <laughs> are lying. Or, what <laughs> what was the pickup line to get? Her? <laughs> uh, no, there was no pickup line. Um, <laughs> well, I we met each other when we were working at the observatory. Um, okay. Yeah, she was a she was doing a she was a salt astronomer there. So we were friends for about five years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we hooked up, um, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't remember this. This is what she says. The first time we met, she said, "Yeah, apparently I told my friend that no, I'm not interested." <laughs> 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 or something to that effect, essentially. So she thought that was very rude at that stage. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Okay, so Rico, I've just got ten questions here just to get Enrico, just to get yeah. to know Enrico, but uh, better. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just quick answers. You don't have to still elaborate. I'll ask the, if I need any further answers. So supper with three people. They could be dead or alive. Who would the three people be with you on the table at the table? Oh, supper with three people. Ah, oh, I probably go with um, Nelson Mandela first, um, and then. The other person I would probably go, I was going to say Paul Dirac, but he hardly ever talked. So I'd probably go with Richard Feynman. Okay, who's Richard Feynman? Uh, in, in a very way? famous uh, physicist. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. He had a very good knack of uh, making science, um, explaining science easily to the okay. to people that, yeah, that's not familiar okay. with it. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, if you could play in a movie along any actress and any actor, who would the actress be and who would the actor be? If I were to play with him? Yeah, in oh, a movie. Oh, okay. Wow. I must say my favorite actress is probably Nicole Kidman. Okay, nice. That's just because he's got red hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I suppose my favorite actor would be Uh, it's either oh, it's, it's a toss up toss up between three of them. It's either Salma, Samuel L. Jackson, yeah. Angel Washington, or um, what's the guy that played in the Sawshank Redemption now? Um, uh, yeah, I'll probably go with Angel Washington. Yeah. Okay. Morgan Freeman. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, if you could play any instrument. 
And in any band, which instrument would it be? And in which band would it be? <laughs> That's quite a question. Um, I'll probably play the drums. Okay. And I, oh, I don't know, band that played this drum. Because I can't play anything. So if you play the drums, you know, it doesn't matter. That <laughs> <laughs> was crap. Um, if I play the drums, um, what is it? No, I can't think of any bands. Um, yeah, I have to skip okay. that one. Sorry, I'm a bit yeah. blank. No problem. Are we binge watching any series? Do we watch TV? What What's the series to be watching now? Um, I started watching Picard. Um, there's a new series on, uh, yeah, on uh, Amazon. Yeah. Um, Yes, I just started watching the first few episodes, so I found that quite interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm watching at the yeah. moment. Right, yeah. perfect. The last movie you cried in? I don't cry in movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the one that, I mean, the one that he, is uh, Precious, that was okay. really tough to watch, yeah. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, what did you tell your 20-year-old self? When I tell my 20-year-old self, I said, like, don't worry so much. Life is not really that much. To, I mean, yeah, don't stress too much. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy yourself a bit more. <laughs> um, give me a pinch myself moment. Like, wow, Enrico, this is really happening, happening to me. Um, yeah, the time, when I flew over to Australia for the first time, to go do my PhD over there, I couldn't believe it. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "Wow, well, it's the first time I ever left the country." <laughs> so yeah, it was quite an experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, fondest childhood memory. <clears throat> fondest childhood memory. Gosh. <laughs> Thing is, I never <laughs> reflect back on the past that often. Um, yeah. Fondest childhood memory. I, I don't know. I guess just being uh, being in my nan's home. Yeah. Mm. I remember when I was really small, we used to go visit her a lot. I think mm. my parents just dropped us there so they could have time away by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was really fun, yeah. Just like okay. spending time with my nan. Yeah. All right. My, um, my granddad, yeah. Uh, superpower and why? Oh, superpower has to be invisibility. Okay. Because you could be quite naughty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so you mean naughty if you could wake up tomorrow and the superpower is you're invisible? What's the, what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, I'll just go around and see what, what other people are doing, essentially. Okay. Yeah. And play right. tricks on people, essentially. <laughs> 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 play tricks um, on my kids, but especially yeah. yeah perfect uh, if you had a billboard up here in paul in the main road and enrico's face is there and so what, what would you want to tell the world every time they drive past a billboard what would you what do, what's your message to the world um oh that's such a philosophical question isn't it um i just probably say um yeah don't stress too much um try try your best um and remember if you have family um and they actually support you um remember that there will always be people there for you right yeah. um yeah you never you're never alone essentially yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect uh who's your inspiration <sighs> inspiration i don't really have any role models um mm. but i guess people that stand out to me is is nelson um, mm. for what he's obviously gone through and still, you know, came out the mm. person that he was. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, I think, yeah, Nelson, basically. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just like, you know, I, I find people that, like, people that have gone through difficult times and comes out a better person on the other side and achieve something amazing. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Sorry, no. this is supposed to be quick fire. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, so, and then what, what, what's the, what's the big dream? I mean, what's, what's, I'm not going to ask you what's your five-year plan. What's your, what's your big dream? What's Enrico's big dream? What do you wake up in the morning saying, this is another way to my goal? Um, my big dream at the moment, well, I have, my big dream is basically my kids. I just want to see them grow up, um, and be the best that they can be. Yeah. That's what I want to see. That's my big dream. And then one day I'll get the opportunity to go up into space. Oh, <laughs> Even wow. if I have to pay for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and then I've just got two more questions. So the first thing is why are we not on WhatsApp and Facebook and why we why why don't we have a social media profile? Uh yeah, I, I was on social media for a while and then I then I it wasn't for me in the end. I thought like, no, nah, this is not. Yeah. Um, I like to, I like, don't like people disturbing me too much. That's part of the problem. Uh, I, yeah. I just find that, yeah, I just find that Facebook and Twitter tend to, to be a very much an echo chamber. I'm not saying mm. everybody is like that. But, mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So I kind of, yeah, I'd rather spend my time on other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so what is in what is in Rico's what's in Rico's view of the coronavirus worldwide? What what's your view? Is it some people say it was made in a lab to cause disruption in the world? Some people say there's a one world order. I'm very intrigued to find out what is what's in Rico's view. I think it's uh I think I don't think it was made in a lab. I, I I don't think I don't see any evidence of that or heard any evidence that's convincing. I think um, the fact that it has such a widespread virus and had such a big impact around the world is basically a wake up call for people to realize on the impact we're having on the world around us. Um, there's nearly seven billion people in the world at the moment. Um, and the way we con going at the moment, uh, we are encroaching on the habitat of several different species. And eventually these things are going to happen, that viruses are going to get transmitted from animals to us. Um, and this is just something that we might have to live for, with essentially for the next couple of hundred years, um, unless we change. Um, and then there's also the issues of climate change and possible pathogens that might be released because um, there are pathogens um, frozen in the ice in the northern, no, most northern parts of the world. And if those gets released, that it can also trigger pandemics possibly. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, I mean, I think it's about half a million people have now. Yeah. Die is it died yeah. or infected? I yeah, can't died. Remember. yeah. So that is a big wake up call. I think um, hopefully in the future we will be more prepared for this. Um, the thing that I found quite slightly disturbing about our response, our worldwide response, is that each country kind of did their own thing separately. Mm. Um, and yes many countries around the world has been able to squash the pandemic or the spread of the pandemic in their country, but that doesn't stop the spread possibly from coming back when these countries open up. And so I think in future, we probably need to think about a more global response um, to this. Um, yeah, that's my views on it, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, and then lastly, you've you've got a lot of kids, they, is, um, aspiring astrophysicists, um, people that want to go to space. They're sitting in the Stadtsaal here in Paul. Enrico's got his the Enrico Foundation Day. Let's call it the Enrico Foundation Day. Um, what and they are you, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Enrico? What give us some words of advice? I mean, we're sitting here. We see you doing what you 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 loving your passion. You're doing your dream. What what must we do? I think. Um, as I said, always remember, not everybody has this, but always remember if you do, 
that you have people around you that support you that's very important um, I, can't, I cannot stress that whether that's your parents whether that's your extended family whether that's your teachers at school uh, you can't get anywhere in life um, without the support of those around you even if it might just be a stranger that gives you an opportunity along the way um, and I the other thing I would say is as a kid, I was very um, self, not self-conscious. I wasn't uh, very um, confident, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, you just got to believe in yourself. Believe in what, if you're good at something, um, you know, go for it. Try to improve yourself in that. And if you have a dream, uh, just always, every step of the, every day that you work towards that goal, eventually it snowballs and get into something bigger and bigger as you go along. Mm -hmm. So if you can do something it step every day to contribute to that goal, uh, it will stand you to in good step in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, believe in yourself. Remember that you can't do things alone. And then if and you have support around you, um, yeah, and always do a little bit every day towards your goal. And then eventually mm -hmm. you get there. Wow. Awesome, dude. That's like a script. I didn't give you the question before, and it sounded like scripted. That <laughs> are we still are we still in good contact with the folks here back in South Africa? Our family? Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I mainly talk to my mom and dad uh, okay. via Skype every day. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, no, not sorry, not every day. I shouldn't say that. Sorry, did I just say every day? No, that's not true. Yeah, I just wanted to say that's a bit much. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, I try to every uh, once a week, uh, maybe twice a month. Um, yeah, my dad used to have the saying, um, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, familiarity breeds contempt. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you walk, yeah, you don't want to walk people's doorsteps down every single day. But anyway, yeah. that's, that's just a side issue. Um, so yeah, I'm in contact with my my family. Um, yeah, but generally I'm quite a private person. Mm. Yeah. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, if Enrico could develop an app, what would the app do? If I could develop, <laughs> if I could develop an app, what would the app do? Um, teleportation. <laughs> Teleport <Nice>. you somewhere. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. There's so many apps out there doing so many things. Um, yeah, just the yeah. Yeah. I don't think I. You need to go out, think out of the box if you want to come up with something special. So yeah, no. Yeah. And I mean, there's a there's a market for everything. That's why people develop <laughs> these apps. <laughs> Um, Enrico, uh, thanks so much for your time, man. I know you're a very private person. I struggle to get all of you because you're not on social media. I've got the spelling of your name wrong as well because I can't find you anywhere on social media. But um, thanks so much um, for your time. And, uh, yeah, look after yourself in UK. Stay safe. Um, all right. And enjoy the, enjoy the holidays coming up soon with the kids. <clears throat> yeah, you too, Miles. Um, and I don't know if you guys are on holiday yet, the schools anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, all the best over there. And uh, I think you guys are getting out of lockdown, aren't you? Slowly. Dude, dude <laughs> we don't want to have a conversation. I need another <laughs> half hour to talk about where we are in lockdown because we had we had a lockdown level three light and now yeah. we're on level three advanced. So they're like iPhones, like iPhone S, <laughs> iPhone S. So every time <laughs> we got yeah. a different level, but we're never going down to level two or level one. But yeah, uh, no, it's yeah, it's we, quite similar over here as well. Yeah, I think it, it was easier to get into lockdown. Um, but yeah, people are still confused about over here about exactly you know what are they allowed to do, what are they not allowed to do. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's just it's just part of the process of trying to get out of lockdown. It's yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the, just, just quickly, what's the general sentiment of the UK citizens about lockdown? I mean, over here, it's like, we're done, we had 21 days, you were supposed to get your stuff under control, now you're wasting our time. I mean, what, what's the sentiment there? I think the sentiment over here is that, yeah, I mean, people want to get out, you can see that. Um, and 
once I mean I think they lift once lo lockdown was lifted. I mean last weekend the beaches were actually covered with people. <laughs> I mean, we didn't go. We didn't go. Um, they were supposed to keep one meter distance or two meter distance, not not uh, adhered to, and then they had problems with you know people just coming from the main cities like London and then go all the way to the beach in the south east coast. Um, they just basically got off the trains apparently with their beach gear on. <laughs> uh, and when they all left, the beach was in a mess in a state. So actually, yeah, yeah the local councils of, of those uh, coastal towns weren't very happy. Yeah. Um, and they were calling basically for, you know, a better control of how people are let out. But I think yeah. people are, you know, just want to get get back to normal, I think. Totally. I think. Um, and then they, there's also confusion about you know what they are allowed to do and what not to not to do because they people say the messaging from is not very really clear so okay yeah yeah so yeah it's not smooth sailing at yeah all. yeah okay but a, a big seeing that though, before we go seeing that you're not on facebook i just want to some of the people are telling you hi saying hi here so otherwise i wouldn't say this because normally people that have facebook would read this but <laughs> mackie beaker mackie beaker oh, says hi out of you that's my cousin um, yeah yeah common <laughs> watson says great interview ricky uh vicky brunk super proud of you Liesl the Yaga waving hello ricky oh, um who else is here adeline wells brunk hello ricky that's all uh, my family <laughs> 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 Um, one of probably this is probably a teacher, Adrian Thomas. Hello, Ricky. Great to see you, proud teacher. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen Brunk, probably also family. Yeah. And then, yeah, Audrey Brown will also say hello, Ricky. So yeah. they all say hello, Ricky. Yeah, say <laughs> my best to them as well. Um, <laughs> at some point, we'll make it back back uh, for a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. We were planning to come this year, but with the lockdown, it was, yeah, yeah. can't come. Yeah. Yeah. All cool. right, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Look after yourself, and I'm sure we're going to chat soon, not on Facebook and WhatsApp, on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, cheers, Miles. Thanks. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.